Hey y'all, I'm Derek. Welcome to 31 Days of Found Horror. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. If you haven't noticed, I've been doing this for about half a month now, and I think I'm going a little crazy. So crazy, in fact, I sound like I can see the future. So I think I need to be put away for a little while, and there's going to be a movie for us today. It's called The Asylum. Ooh, that sounds nice. Okay, I am not doing that through the entire show. <laughs> But yeah, I do feel like I'm going a little bit crazy from all this, but you know what? We're halfway through. I ain't quitting now. I'm too far deep. Like I said before, this movie's called The Asylum. It's a rather short film, another one that's round about an hour long. So, it's probably about crazy people. Yay! I like crazy people. They see leprechauns. Let's get started. How can a man be so competent and yet his own saboteur? Let me explain. So this movie stars the same people from The Rake, and it's a Ken Collins movie. So Ken Collins actually has a way of coming up with interesting ideas for his movies. I'm not gonna lie about that. He he had an interesting premise with The Rake. Dance with the Devil was a WTF movie, but if it was put in the right hands, it could have actually worked. This one has the same problem Ken has with all of his other movies. He doesn't shut up. He's really afraid of silence and he's afraid to allow his camera do the talking for him. Ken, you have a good eye for story. You don't have to describe everything. So the idea behind this is Ken is a local historian and he's going to break into an asylum that's in his city. And he, we learn that he's going with his friends, Max and Ted. Okay. And at this point we get a little bit of lore about the asylum in text. It says the asylum was shut down in 1975 for- Did somebody say torture? It's a joke from when I lived in San Diego. I'm sorry, it just makes me laugh every time I say it. Did somebody say torture? <laughs> I'm sorry, inside jokes don't work on this. So the reason he's going to go to the asylum is because even though the asylum is closed, they still post armed guards around, which he thinks is shady. Or it could be that they've had problems with people breaking in. So they're driving, they're driving, it's very Manos, Hands of Fate, and then they get right to the boundary of the property where the asylum is, and they go looking for the orifice. There's a hole in the ground that leads to the underground tunnel system that connects all the buildings of the asylum. This is not actually that uncommon a thing. The idea is, is that it's a self-contained city. Buildings are connected by these underground tunnels so that if laundry needs to be done in building three, it can go straight to the laundry building without anybody ever having to leave. It especially comes in handy in colder climates. But they call the hole the orifice. That is a word choice. Oh man, I just realized my blanket's been down this entire time. I'm just sloppy today. Well, I fixed it. Um, I'm not reshooting anything. I'm on a deadline, people. So there's no way that I can explain this next scene without laughing, because every now and again, I have the sense of humor of a 12 year old. So Ken, Ted, and Max go looking for the hole. And they find the hole. They go into the hole. And they find a shaft. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <laughs> like I said, sometimes I have a 12 year old sense of humor. It keeps me young. <laughs> Max and Ted are both worried about asbestos on the premises. But Ken doesn't believe in asbestos. I'm guessing he must be a big fan of QAnon. The reason he thinks that there's armed guards isn't to keep people out because of the asbestos, even though that's a good reason not to go to this place. But Ken 
is trying to prove the local rumor that there's military labs somewhere on the ruins of the asylum. So he's not much of a historian, more like he's a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, this is QAnon stuff. He's trying to find the chemtrails that turn the frogs gay! So they find some stairs, they go up the stairs, and they're touching everything. And they're not wearing gloves. Ugh. Okay. If you're urban exploring, there's a few things you need. Steel-toed boots and gloves. <laughs> Please. And also, masks. Not just because of the funky Covidina right now, because this came out before the funky Covidina, but because there might be asbestos. And they hear a scream. But Ken doesn't really apply any reason to that. He's just like, let's keep going. And they're talking about what a mess the place is. It's abandoned. It's going to be a mess. If there's a roof that has one spot that doesn't leak in the storm, that place is going to turn into a squat. I'm just saying. So they're in this building and they hear a thump. So of course they go investigate it because it's a sound. And you know what we do when we hear sounds? We investigate it. We don't nope, we investigate. And they run into a guy in a lab coat who literally points at them and does the invasion of the body snatchers Donald Sutherland thing. <laughs> so finally they decide to nope and they're noping down into the tunnels again and they get lost in the tunnels. Max all of a sudden doesn't feel well and he just goes missing. And so they find themselves in another building and at this point, Ken fancies himself an actor. He's trying to remain in control, damn it. He is in control of this situation. They're not scared, but they're totally scared. In this building, they find a barred door and they try opening it, but it's jammed, so that's no way out. Then they hear Max, so they go trying to find their friend and that leads them to another building. And the only way in is to jump into this courtyard with no visible exit other than going through the building. Not a good idea when you're being chased by loonies. So they go into the building, they explore it, and they find their friend Max. Is it Max or Matt? Oh, it's Matt. I've been calling him Max this entire time and his name is Max. I need better handwriting, y'all. So they find Matt bound and gagged in the corner somehow. But then they see Dr. Vanicut and he does the thing again. So they nope out of there. They go back into the courtyard and climb each other up into the open space. They go into the building that they originally were in, go back down into the tunnels, follow the tunnels that they somehow miraculously know how to get through now, back up to the hole. They leave the hole. <laughs> I'm sorry, 12 year old in our back of the car. At this point, Ken mentions that there are people off screen. There's like a group of people off screen and they get into the car. And then we get a note at the end saying that this film was found in the car that was abandoned about five miles away from the asylum. No one knows what happened to the kids who were in there, which I think is a total cop out. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was a total cop out. They literally could not figure out how to end this movie. Honestly, this movie had a good concept. It's a little bit of a old cliche of going into an abandoned asylum. I mean, I literally live in a city with a derelict asylum in the city limits. Back in high school, it used to be a test of courage to come down to Milledgeville for a night to break into the asylum to spend the night. Did I ever do that? No, <laughs> because guess what? I watch horror movies. So it's kind of contrived. It would still be a good story to watch because if done right, it turns into what I call comfort horror. It's a story that you know, but if there's good characters, you still want them to survive. It's the same reason people still watch the remake of House on Haunted Hill. It's comfort horror. It's not anything new, but it's fun to watch because you know when to be scared. But once again, Ken doesn't shut up. Ken, the guy who made this movie, really needs to understand that he doesn't have to fill the silence. In fact, the silence can actually add tension. Just let the visuals do the talking. But not in the same way that it did in Dance with the Devil because Dance with the Devil was too convoluted to follow. I'm still feeling trippy from that one. <laughs> but you can let the visuals tell the story once we know the story. Once we know the plot, you don't have to fill every bit with talking. 
you don't have to explain how you're feeling because if you emote properly, the camera will express that. But some of the scares were actually pretty decent. Like honestly, I was not expecting some of the jump scares we had. And the editing was decent. So good on you. Like I said, Ken, you are completely competent, but you're also your own worst enemy. You need to learn the balance, my friend. And I do have to say, this one was better than the last two I've saw of yours. So just keep going on this trajectory. Maybe you'll finally become comfortable with yourself and be able to do a decent horror film. So have you seen this movie? If so, drop me a line down below and tell me what you thought of it. And of course, if you haven't seen this yet, it will be linked in the description. So, that's it for this episode of 31 Days of Found Horror. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for tuning in. And come back tomorrow for more found footage nightmares. <laughs>